You know what's great? Dinosaurs. You know what else is great? Dinosaur movies. Or at least, some of them are. It's hard to talk about dinosaur movies without mentioning Jurassic Park. The 93 film, based off the 1990 novel, was a massive success and spawned a gigantic franchise. So of course it gets talked about and criticized. Jurassic Park has some scientific inaccuracies and many articles and blogs like to talk about it. Jurassic Park got many on-screen dinosaurs wrong. 10 things Jurassic Park gets completely wrong about dinosaurs. Top things Jurassic Park got wrong about dinosaurs. Jurassic Park got almost everything wrong about this iconic dinosaur. Here's just how wrong Jurassic Park is about dinosaurs. Dinosaurs, where Jurassic Park got things it wrong. Things Jurassic Park got wrong about dinosaurs. I mean, I even talked about JP in my own video on the T-Rex when talking about its eyesight. There are plenty of YouTube videos that also have similar titles that cover similar topics. And the thing is, they're usually pretty spot on. There are many errors, and it's good to promote the truth about dinosaurs. It provides educational entertainment, and I think it is a positive to point out where it was inaccurate. I particularly like when there's a video of a paleontologist watching, reacting, and commenting about a clip or a series of clips. But today, I want to look at some of the things that JP actually gets right. I mean, first of all, to be fair, the original Jurassic Park film came out a kind of long time ago. It's nearly been 30 years. To put that into perspective, the film's release date is closer in time to the moon landing than it is to today, and the book itself is a few years older. Now, in truth, there were things about dinosaurs that would have been known back then that they still did get wrong. But for its time, it wasn't so bad. Now you might say, whoa, 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 the Jurassic World films are pretty recent. Yeah, can't argue with that. The thing about Jurassic World though, is that they just sort of acknowledge and lean into the inaccuracies. Like in the first Jurassic World film, when Henry Wu says, you didn't ask for reality, you asked for more teeth. Sort of sounds like a bit of a meta commentary on the audience. Like, yeah, we know the dinosaurs shouldn't look this way, but hey, a lot of people come to see our movies. So, I'm going to be mostly focusing on the original Jurassic Park, rather than any of its sequels. But there will be some overlap. Anyway, let's look at some things that Jurassic Park actually got right. You know, people have often said to me, Did you know the T-Rex was actually a scavenger? On rare occasions, this even pops up in What Jurassic Park Got Wrong lists. But, overall, I think Jurassic Park got this one right. The alleged controversy seemed to have been sparked in the early 90s when Jack Horner, a consultant on JP, gave a talk at DinoFest in Indiana called Steak Knives, Beady Eyes, and Tiny Little Arms, a portrait of a T-Rex as a scavenger. Now I don't think he was the first person to propose this theory, but his talk, as well as his book, The Complete T-Rex, co-written with Don Leesum, seemed to have pushed this idea into the mainstream and the media were quick to jump on the story, with articles something like, The Mighty T-Rex was actually a wimpy scavenger. Certainly makes an eye-catching headline. The thing is though, T-Rex would scavenge, but it was also a predator. It scavenged and it hunted. A paper published by the paleontologist Robert E. Palma and his co-authors described how they had found a hadrosaur tail with the tip of a carnivorous dinosaur tooth in it. The thing is though, the bone around the tooth was beginning to heal, so the hadrosaur must have been alive when it was attacked, as it clearly survived the attack. A healed bite wound is a fairly clear sign of predatory behavior. Given the anatomy of the tooth and the lack of other predators at the time, it's very likely a T-Rex tooth. The paleontologist Thomas R. Holtz Jr. did extensive studies on tyrannosaurs and rejects the obligate scavenger idea. In fact, almost every paleontologist I've read about seems to reject it. Even Jack Horner wrote in his book back in the 90s, I'm not convinced that the T-Rex was only a scavenger, though sometimes I will say so just to be contrary and to get my colleagues arguing. So all of this is to say it was both. T-Rex was an active predator, but of course it would have scavenged when it had the opportunity. I feel like this is what we see in Jurassic Park. The first thing we see the Rex eat is a tied up goat. Now obviously this doesn't technically count as scavenging, as the goat was alive, but it does show the Rex, or Rexy, or Roberta, or whatever you want to call her, will take the chance at an easy meal, but she also hunts the Gallimimus in a later scene. I think this gives us a good representation of a T-Rex as an opportunistic predator. 
A moment I enjoy from the original JP film is near the beginning when Alan Grant looks out at the lagoon, seeing the dinosaurs moving together and proclaims, Herds, they really do move in herds. I know some people have made fun of this moment, but I honestly like it. I mean, Alan Grant is already, and understandably, pretty overwhelmed in general, so I think it makes sense how emotional he is. But it's also nice to see social behaviours displayed in dinosaurs. It's something we've known about for a long time, mostly from fossilised dinosaur footprints, so having it in the movie and drawing attention to it is a nice and accurate depiction. Just a quick bonus fact, but I thought I should mention, in the original book, Henry Wu also wonders if the dinosaurs are truly accurate. Towards the end of the book, it reads, he, Henry, was never sure, never really sure at all, whether the behaviour of the animals was historically accurate or not. Were they behaving as they really had in the past? It was an open question, ultimately unanswerable. There is a point much earlier in the book where Henry Wu and John Hammond are talking about how real the dinosaurs are, but even then there is the line making the best guesses he, Henry, could, but still making guesses. So maybe there is a little bit of an acknowledgement about how accurate things are. Kind of. This again is from an earlier chapter in the book where Henry is explaining his concerns to John Hammond about how fast some of the dinosaurs can move. Speaking of movement. Slow, lumbering and sluggish. These are some adjectives that were apparently attached to dinosaurs before the release of Jurassic Park. But when Jurassic Park came out, it showed people just how fast and agile these creatures could be. Of course, the T-Rex chasing the Jeep is a bit much, but watching the raptors run and jump shattered the idea that these animals couldn't be agile. And the flock of Gallimimuses showed just how fast dinosaurs could run, which seems pretty accurate to real life. The Gallimimus is considered a cursorial animal, meaning it had limbs specifically adapted for running. And it was fairly fast, with an estimated top speed somewhere between 42 to 56 kilometers an hour, so that's about 29 to 34 miles per hour. The dinosaurs look pretty good when they're moving. They even look good when they are standing still. If we go back to dinosaur movies before Jurassic Park, from some of the earliest all the way up to the late 80s and early 90s, we see something a little off with our big carnivorous theropods. They stand up straight with their tails dragging on the ground. Now this is how people thought they walked back in the early days of dinosaur discovery. But beginning in the late 60s and early 70s and into the 80s, a period sometimes referred to as the dinosaur renaissance, paleontologists began to realize that these dinosaurs had their tails off the ground and stood in a more horizontal position with the tail acting as a counterbalance. Even though you can trace these discoveries back to the 60s, Jurassic Park was one of the first to bring this image to the mainstream public in a major way, portraying dinosaurs in a more bird-like pose. Now of course, one of the big complaints about the original Jurassic Park is where are all the feathers? In defense of the first book and film, the first non-bird dinosaur that was discovered with feathers was Cynoceropteryx, discovered in China in 1996, which is a few years after the book and film. I say non-bird dinosaur because, of course, birds are dinosaurs, with the clade AVALA being the only clade containing the living dinosaurs, the birds. Now, not all dinosaurs are birds, but all birds are dinosaurs. And one way we might group them is into avian and non-avian dinosaurs. So non-avian dinosaurs like a T-Rex and avian dinosaurs like a crow are related. And I like how much JP drives this point home. The idea isn't exactly new. In the 1860s, biologists like Huxley and Darwin noted how Archaeopteryx showed a close resemblance to modern day birds while still having reptile features, such as clawed forelimbs and a long bone tail. But even today we have organizations that try to say birds are not dinosaurs. So it's pretty cool that Jurassic Park got this one right. And finally I have one more bonus fact and I think it might actually be the most important. Jurassic Park ignited a renewed interest in dinosaurs. We are now in the middle of what Professor Paul Barrett of the Natural History Museum in London called a golden age of paleontology. There are more paleontologists working in the field with more dig sites and we discover a new dinosaur species almost every week. What triggered this rebirth in dinosaur studies and interests? Well, according to the paleontologist, Dr. Steve Brusatti, Jurassic Park 
played a huge and underappreciated role in the transformation of paleontology that we are now witnessing. A Natural History Museum paleontologist, Dr. Susanna Maidment said, I was a teenager when Jurassic Park came out, and although I was already interested in dinosaurs by that time, its massive popularity meant I was no longer embarrassed about talking about such a career. There's a master's course in paleontology taught in Bristol University. The person that teaches that course, Professor Mike Benton, stated that, We have about 30 students a year, and we ask them what factor was the main influence in their decision to study dinosaurs. Jurassic Park gets the biggest show of hands. Think of all the discoveries and dinosaur research that must have been done by paleontologists who were inspired by Jurassic Park. It's not a perfect movie, and there are many mistakes and inaccuracies, and they are worth talking about so we can educate ourselves and learn more about dinosaurs. But let's not forget how it ignited an interest in dinosaurs for so many of us, myself included, and it encouraged those who already had an interest to take it further. Despite the passing of millions of years, the public's interest and imagination was grasped once again when a spotlight was taken and shone on these magnificent creatures. I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty great. Anyway, thanks for watching.